بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد حبت في الله continue on in our study of some of the issues or مسائل of نكاح of marriage uh, we will look at the hadith uh, in عمدة تحكم going back to the to the book the text عمدة تحكم going to the hadith of عقبة عقبة ابن عامر which is the hadith which talks about the conditions uh, conditions related to uh, marriage. An Uqbat ibn Amr radiyallahu ta'ala anhu qala qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam inna al-ahaqqa shuruti an tufu bi ma stahlaltum bihi al-furuj. Ruahu Bukhari wa Muslim. In this hadith of Bukhari and Muslim, the hadith of Uqba ibn Amr, radiyallahu ta'ala anhu, he said that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Verily, the most important conditions to fulfill are those which make the private parts lawful. Very important, this hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam which lets us know a little bit about the understanding of Islamic uh, nikah, that actually those conditions, conditions, uh, f- uh, fulfilling the conditions of nikah and the conditions in uh, nikah, the conditions of nikah and the uh, of marriage and the conditions in marriage, which are two separate things, and we're going to briefly uh, speak about those differences. That this is what makes. It lawful for the man and woman who are once strangers, who may have known each other and uh, known of each other, or their families knew of each other, but by fulfilling these conditions, they now become lawful to where they, the man can see the woman and the woman can see the man in any form they wish. They can cohabitate and establish love and uh, the other beautiful things that come with uh, marriage. That these things are established and become lawful to, for them to have relations by fulfilling the conditions of the marital contract. And we mentioned in the prior le- lessons about the shuruta nikah, the conditions of marriage. And the conditions of marriage, according to some of the ulama, mostly these are agreed upon, these are four that are agreed upon. They are that, of course, there needs to be a wali, and there needs to be two witnesses. And as we mentioned, not uh, uh, the uh, ahnaf, the uh, Imam Abu Hanifa, rahimahullah ta'ala, and his school of thought in general, does not make it conditional for... Uh, that the wali is actually not uh, conditional. And there's details with regards to that according to that madhab. But that is incorrect. And the other madhab with regards to this issue, because there is an authentic text where the Prophet ﷺ said, La nikah illa bi, illa bi wali. That there is no marriage without the wali. The Prophet ﷺ said it. So after that, it doesn't matter what even our great imams have said that uh, if they made ijtihad and they were incorrect in it, they will receive one reward. Uh, and, if they, uh, and if they were incorrect, they will see re- one reward. And if they were correct in their ijtihad, they will receive two rewards. But as the ulama also make, make it known, la ijtihad muqabla nas, that there is no ijtihad, there's no uh, striving uh, to gain a ruling when there is a clear text, a, cl- a text that's very clear, that, doesn't, that isn't ambiguous, that doesn't have many different meanings. It's very clear. So when you have a text that's very, very clear, then there is no uh, ijtihad or fatwa that can go against that in us. Of course, uh, Nam. So if it, it's very clear like that. So, with re, uh, back to the issue that we were, were talking about, 
So we mentioned that there's four conditions for uh, marriage. The first, uh, we mentioned that there must be a wali, there must be witnesses, and then there is uh, kabul, al-ijab wa kabul. There is asking, uh, you know, that the, the wali gives the woman uh, away in marriage, and then acceptance by the bride, uh, by the groom. So this, these make up the four conditions of marriage. Some other issues come up with regards to this hadith, which show us and to, which opens up the door for us to discuss uh, the topic of shurut finika. So these are two different things. In Arabic, you say uh, shurut nikah, and that means the marital conditions. Shurut finika. When you add the fi. This means the conditions within the marriage, that these are conditions that the husband or the wife or both may have come up with before they entered marriage. And Sheikh Omar Ashkar, he mentioned some very beneficial, uh, he, he mentioned about the, the different types of conditions for nikah, the conditions for uh, within the marriage. He said that the, it is basically divided into three categories. The first is shurut muwafaqa li maqsur aqd nikah wa maqsar shari'. So the first type uh, or category of these conditions would be those conditions which are in agreement and accordance with the uh, with what is uh, in accordance with the, the Sharia, and they go in accordance with uh, the marital contract, meaning that they it's nothing new than what is already an obligation, what's already in accordance with the Sharia, and that, you know, and the maqasid of the Sharia, you know, to the maqasid of nikah, the, 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 the uh, those things which are uh, which encourage the fulfillment of the marriage and which marriage has uh, the wisdoms behind marriage. So those things which help fulfill the wisdom of marriage or the sharia with regards to nikah, then that's the first category. He said the second category, and so the, and, and for example, so we'll just go right into explaining those categories. Uh, he said, "Atafaka ahl al-ilm ala siha hadha nur min al-shurud." So the ulama have uh, are in agreement that this is one of the uh, types of shurud finika of conditions within the marriage, and he gives examples: ka ishtirat al-zawja ashrab al-maruf or ashrab al-maruf. Uh, so, for example, that a woman makes it a condition that she will be maintained in uh, in righteousness, or you know she will be lived with in a humane and righteous uh, way, which is in accordance with her her habit, you know, in the habit of her family, in the habit of her people in her village, or whatever that she will live in that context. So that's in accordance with the Sharia, and that's what we must do. That's an obligation. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, hum bi ma'roof, you know, that we should, uh, you know, live with them in righteousness and in, and in a way that is befitting. Uh, also, al-infaq, that, you know, she has the right to be uh, spent upon her her housing should be taken care of, her clothing, all of those are obligations in marriage. And if she were to make that conditional before marriage, even then this just uh, of course this is this is an obligation. So there's no uh, problem with that, and and so forth. And also likewise. And if, for example, if a husband has, a man has more than one wife, uh, if the new wife, she comes into the marriage and she says, 
you, uh, I want this to be conditional that you are uh, just with me or just with the, my co-wife or whatever. This is already an obligation upon him. So this is already in, in accordance with the Sharia. So these kind of conditions, these are the first category uh, that these are in accordance with the Sharia. Uh, and the second category, Anu'athani shurut alati tunafi maqsada aktinika. So these are the, or go against the Sharia. These are uh, the second type of conditions in marriage, in nikah, are those conditions which uh, go against the Sharia or that they go against the, the wisdom of marriage. And the Sheikh said, اتفقوا أهل العلم على عدم الصحة الشروط التي تخالف ما أمر الله به أو نهى عنه أو تخلب مقصور نكاح Al Asli. So he said that the scholars are in consensus. They agree upon that it is uh, a not a sound condition, not a valid condition, that which goes against the Sharia and what Allah uh, has prohibited. You know, and that that contradicts what Allah has prohibited and goes against the. Uh, purpose of marriage, the initial purpose of marriage. And then he says, and from those conditions are, for example, if a woman uh, makes a condition upon her husband that she will not obey him, then this is battle. This goes against the, the goes against the maqasid al shara This goes against what is, uh, what the Sharia has legislated. And and what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded. Also, likewise, is if a woman makes it a condition, she says, uh, I want to go, come and go as I please without your permission. This also uh, is also uh, a, sh a condition which is also uh, false in a because it goes against the Sharia and the Sharia principles what according to a hadith of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam or that um, for example if the husband were to make a condition and say i'm not going to give my wives uh and he has more than one wife and he says i'm not going to give one of them or be equal with them i'm not going to be fair with them or i'm not going to divide my time with them i've decided not to this is haram and this condition is false. Uh, and likewise, if, for example, he makes it a condition, he says, I'm not going to uh, marry me, but I'm not going to take care of you. This likewise is also false or that he's not going to give her a mahar. This is also false. And so these, because these go against the, what is uh, the what the Sharia has commanded and what is the maqsood of the nikah or the maqasid of uh, nikah, the, um, what, what nikah, the, the, the wisdom in the hikmah of nikah. Or an, uh, some other conditions might be, for example, uh, if he makes it a condition, okay, I'm going to marry you, but I'm not going to have uh, sexual relations with you. Or, I, I'm only going to have relations with you once a year or once a month. These are, uh, these are conditions which are impermissible and they are, uh, they're impermissible and, and unaccepted. And with that, the scholars, they say that those conditions are false, but that the nikah itself would be sahih, according to some of the ulama. The third category of conditions are conditions that the sharia did not legislate or did not indicate or point to, but it is for the benefit of one of the parties. So, 
this without getting into all the details of those who say that those uh, giving the other details with the, the other issue. Uh, this third issue is, for example, if something is in the benefit of the, for example, the woman. She makes it a condition. She says, if you marry uh, another wife, then uh, I want out of the marriage. And the man has agreed to this. So the scholars, they differ over this, but the situation, for example, uh, then, then and, and if the man, then he goes and he, uh, he, he then takes another wife and she asks for this nikah before she asks for this divorce to, for the marriage to be uh, ended if the husband takes his, another wife. And this is before they got married. This was a condition, fin nikah, they made this, this act. Then it would be he would have to fulfill, he would have to release his wife, but not his new wife. He would have to release his wife if she wants that. So then this would be fischa nikah. This would be a cause for terminating the marriage from the uh, view, from the, the, from the woman's side. And this might be through a khula or like this. So these are just some of the issues with regards to Sharud uh, Finika, and we'll continue on in the next sitting. We ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam.